Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, wa ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself, Fana abdukul ajeezu, da'eefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal. And but for the grace of Allah's rahmah that keeps us going, that we took a path in which to be nothing. And alhamdulillah Allah opened for us a way towards these realities to make our tariq to be real our way to be real and we encourage everyone to communicate and interact with helpme at nurmuhammad.com, ask the questions, not to attention of anyone because we have a staff of people who will be looking at it, reviewing at it and going and trying to answer. If it's an answer that they can apply that we've already applied before, alhamdulillah if it requires that they sit with me and ask then we'll try to address it to the best of our ability. InshaAllah min Allahi tawfiq that Allah support. Alhamdulillah do we have any questions for tonight inshaAllah? They give us a direction for where should we go tonight. <laughs> Sayyidi, how should we go about the concept of nothingness and being non-existent in our day-to-day -day activities? Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Again the sensitivity of our subjects in lieu of all the people who have complete no understanding of tariqah that to have a self-worth because a lot of these words that we use in, in English psychology and in English teachings may have a negative understanding and that's not at all what the tariqah is about. And one reality is that how can we expect people to love us when we don't love ourselves? So this is supreme. Now to love myself is to appreciate what Allah has given to me as a gift of every everything that Allah has given to me is a gift in which I love it and I respect it and I reach a level in which I stop from pride of it. Not to be proud of what Allah has given as a gift but to respect. And that's why our zikr every day, alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah hundred times at Salatul Fajr. Alhamdulillah wa shukran illa salatu shukr. Why? Because hamd everything is praising Allah and I, sh I should and I too must join in that praising. And shukr for what Allah has given to me, not what I wanted but what Allah has given. To be thankful for what Allah has given and the tariqah comes to teach that reality. That before you make all these requirements then become upset because you didn't get those requirements or those things that you had asked for from Allah you never stop to thank Him for what He did give of, of health, of wealth, of possessions, of mind and aqal and just the common sense. Some people have no sense. Whatever health Allah gave you there are people who have less of that. So at every condition and in every, every state we are being gifted by our Lord these realities. So then tariqah comes to teach, don't you love yourself? Don't you love that what God has given to you, respect yourself? You won't respect from other people but yet you don't respect yourself. Now within that secret of respecting yourself comes the secrets of these awliyaullah. For if you truly respect yourself you would listen to their guidance because their guidance will expose your character defects and magnify what God has given to you, not what you're running after this dunya for. 
Some people are so obsessed with a target and it becomes a box for them. They want a specific issue and why this specific issue is not opening for them they become depressed and sad and every type of characteristic. And the danger is your mind has boxed you into a place and has actually locked you. And the purpose of guidance is that if you talk to a guide and one whom is guided they may inspire you to look out literally of the box. So somebody may say, oh you know like how come I'm not on this project, working on this project, doing this project, doing this. But then all of a sudden the shaykh may say, there's 10 other projects you could be doing. Why are you box onto this one issue? And that's the danger of our life is our mind and shaitan has the ability to come and lock onto something and then create a panic, a sadness, a disappointment with our Lord, disappointment in everything. And the tariqah is to come and to teach, be happy with yourself, proud of yourself in the sense that what God has given to you, you have a responsibility. How am I to serve you to the best of my character? How am I to have the best of example and therefore magnify everything that Allah has given to us? So the tariqah comes to teach these and how to have this good characteristic, how to respect yourself and stop at the line of becoming ignorant and proud of who you are. I'm going to give you an example that a animal characteristic that when we look around at ourself and then begin to observe other people. The shaykh's personal life has gone through many abuses, many, many difficulties that you would never know it unless you're very close. Abuse by other shaykhs, by people in their lives, by many things. But because of their training you never see it on their face, on their lips or through their typing and their hands. They live their life because everything is like a beads that they sew together like a tasbih. If they're teaching you muraqabah and meditation, and all their meditation is about being at the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Whether you arrived or you didn't arrive, you fake it until you make it. That I'm at Rosa Sharif, if my heart opened and I can see Sayyidina Muhammad Alhamdulillah. And if I can't it makes no difference, I still placed myself at Rosa Sharif. If your life is governed by this rule then you're at Rosa Sharif and a shaykh has offended you, a Muslim has offended you, a non-Muslim has offended you, something has gone wrong. Do you think in the presence of Prophet is the judge, he's the lawmaker, the lawgiver that what Allah has given to Prophet how would the reaction be? If you stated the case and Prophet is listening, what would he have said? Oh, destroy him, go after him, ridicule and insult him. All these things that people with bad character do, it shows who they really are, that they had no training. They never went through tazkiyah and they have no sense of being in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So then their knowledge became a source of arrogance and pride for them. They think they copied and pasted and learned something and the sickness of pride entered. Had they taken and completed their path of tazkiyah and tariqah they would have understood that I'm always in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and Prophet would have said, watch out, as you're my family, he's my family, just stay quiet for the love of me. And they stay quiet and say, if you want your reward by bringing my family down, I'm not happy with you for that. 
if you stay quiet, I will give you my reward, I will dress you, I will bless you and the whole path was only for that anyways. So maybe that was the secret of the problem that was sent to you, hmm? Without that problem you didn't have that account with Sayyidina Muhammad With that problem you now have that account with Prophet that stick quiet for my sake, have good character for my sake. If you want from them your solution, go get it. But in your badness of character you may become distant from me. So because of their training they would never risk anything like that. So then they're ordered stay quiet. So when you see them not at those associations, not sitting with those people, not in the groups of those shaykhs, it's because they've been ordered by Sayyidina Muhammad stay away, stay quiet and I will raise you. I will dress you, that's it. We're not a people who enter into conflict and argument and let's debate this. Then they give an example that look to the internet when they describe how people will have characteristics. And do you know what the characteristic of a rat, a rat is? It's dirty, it's filthy. And do you know why it's filthy? Because it sends its poo poo everywhere. <laughs> How does the guy find the rat? When they come and say, You have mice and you have rats in your home, why is it bad? Why is it dangerous? It's because the rat is poo pooing on everything. He's putting his droppings on every closet and every cabinet, on every spoon, on every plate. And that's how they're tracking him. They say, Oh, look at all these droppings everywhere. You file, you, you follow the tracks of the waste to find the creature and along the way the waste was causing all the sickness and the problems. So then now look at the characteristics of people online, the rats, they go from page to page throwing poo poo, making bad comments, throwing bad comments. What is that? It's not from teaching, it's not from Sayyidina Muhammad it's just their excrements, their waste, just the garbage of shaitan coming through them through their fingers. They throw it on page to page to page. So you follow the page and you're following a rat. They're just going from page to page making satanic comments against Ahlul Bayt, against Allah, against the descendants of Sayyidina Muhammad And imagine one who may have an uloom and a knowledge he represents a piece of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why taskiyah and taqwa and tariqah comes to teach us. Is that any knowledge or anything to be built, any power in your prayer to be built, anything that you're seeking out of this relationship with Allah if its foundation is not the beatific character and all of these mannerisms that they teach. Of what benefit is it for? Become hafiz and, and you become like a rat making bad comments every time? You memorize hadith and, and become like a rat making bad comments? So what is the benefit of that knowledge? That's tariqah. And just saying, I, I love these six shaykhs online, I like this shaykh, 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 no problem. But which shaykh likes you? That's what you should really be worried about. It's not like rock stars, you like 10 of them online and you go click, 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 I like this shaykh, I like this shaykh, I like this shaykh. Find out which shaykh likes you. That's your, your lock, that's your bond. If you can answer that that shaykh likes you, you're set, alhamdulillah. You're good with Sayyidina Muhammad because that's a descendant and there's a relationship. So then our life is then how to be good with the shaykh. Find the one that your heart is connecting to, that their knowledges connect like a puzzle into your heart. Some of them you listen to, they're teaching things like reading an encyclopedia and really slow. <laughs> 
I've, I've listened, click online, and it's literally like somebody picked up an encyclopedia, page one. I'm like, oh my God, I can't take more than two seconds, that's it, forget it. You know, the heart is not connected to that. Some people actually like to join in and read the encyclopedia. <laughs> Those people will join in. So first you find whom your heart is connected to and then now this line opens then email. Email and begin to communicate, this is me, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm watching, I'm following. I want to be known by you by interacting with your community, with the email, not personal, there's not 10,000 people emailing a shaykh personally and he's going to sit there and stop his whole life just to send 10,000 emails back. But they try to develop a system in which the staff and all of the people who are being of service can contribute and support that. Then you build that relationship with the shaykh, you're asking, you're getting answers, you're asking, you're getting answers, that's called guidance. Then you begin to support, you begin to read and study the knowledges. If you see the shaykh has this many books, this many websites, this many articles, this many uh, YouTubes, have you finished all the thousand videos that you need to click on 10 other websites? If you did, wow, SubhanAllah, I, gotta, I will follow your website. <laughs> There's so much information there. So it means take a course and go deep into it. If you find your heart connected to it, then be from it and build that relationship with the tariqah inshaAllah. <clears throat> uh, Sayyidi, last few months have been really testing with lots of uncertainties around almost everything. How does one continue to stay positive and hopeful that things would change for good? <clears throat> Inshallah, not to be a party pooper. Things are not changing for good. Everything has a phase and this dunya is in a death phase. And anything that is in a phase of, of dying, one reality is dying and a new is always opening. Our concept of death is not something understood by most people. Even a human when they die they're actually being born. One phase is like going but that's not the end, something much more beatific is coming. Same we've given talks on the seed, you plant a seed, for the seed it's thinking, it's, why are you putting me in the ground, I'm going to die. Because Allah has a plan that a much more beautiful flower tree that bears fruits and other flowers is going to be coming out and the seed has to perish for the tree to appear and the flower and the rose to appear. So everything has a phase. This dunya is in that phase, it's going down. And by guidance of Sayyidina Muhammad has warned us of all the difficulties, all the catastrophes, all the turmoils, all of the things that would be visiting upon this earth and SubhanAllah with this events that have happened in the last three to four months, nobody could have imagined that without a single shot fired, one unseen has shut down all the doors of this dunya. You know they worship, when they say God and that they worship God, it's not our Allah. When they say God it stands for gold, oil and drugs. Gold, oil, drugs, G-O-D. Gold, the source of all wealth. They took the gold and gave you worthless paper. <laughs> paper you have, you can blow your nose with it, it's not based on anything. Oil was the spice was the fuel for every factory and every everything. How Allah brought that oil now to nothing? It's not a, a dollar a barrel because there's not a ship moving, not a factory turning on, 
who, who wants all this oil? So they're pumping it into the desert and throwing it into the sand. He brought their entire desire, brought it all and crushed it down. And you're wondering if this coming back, it been dealt a death blow, pow. And then drugs, those are the things they worship. Why? Because they send out the sickness to give you a remedy. They make people sick to give them, oh here's your remedy. And the biggest industries are the drug and pharmaceutical industries. So this is what they worship when they say dunya and mulk and in God we trust. No it's in gold, oil and drugs they trust. It's not in Allah and it's not in the Prophet of Sayyidina Muhammad but in P-R-O-F-I-T, I hope my spelling is good. <laughs> Shaitan is playing. So this dunya is in a difficult phase. As a result make your connection. Keep the way of zikr, keep the way of, of love, keep the way of taskia and tafakkur because it's a way in which to contemplate and take an account. Before Allah sends something to decimate and, and destroy something, why don't you just take an account of yourself? Ya Rabbi let me clean myself before you send this calamity upon my head. Let me make my istighfar, let me make my, my salawat, let me try to attend the zikrs in which I will try to clean with your blessings and your barakah before you have to scrub me in a way that's not pleasant. So we pray that Allah inspire us to this way of taskiyah which means cleaning and this way of tafakkur and contemplation in which I can see that we're not going to be faultless but we're going to have many faults. But to be from the people who ask for Allah's forgiveness, not the shaitan fool us and say, oh you're so good you don't ever ask, you don't need to ever ask for God's forgiveness. But our wazifa and our awrad is to continuously ask every day a thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand times istighfar, astaghfirullah azeem ya Rabbi wa tubu ilayk, through your sifat of azeem, your might and majesty that nothing can compare to it. I'm begging your forgiveness, inshaAllah. <clears throat> Sayyidi, is smoking or secondhand smoking bad for our spirituality and how to quit smoking addiction? InshaAllah, again if we go into the meditation those things will be resolved. Uh, somebody sent us the, uh, a show to be a, an imam on their show and let's ask fikr questions. That's not our specialty to give you an answer based on the fikr and say that this haram, this halal, this haram. But the wisdom of awliyaullah that we hope to be under their feet and under their barakah is to give us the hikmah and the wisdom of something so that it makes sense in your deep heart. That is not a debate of halal and haram and is this is haram and this is haram and this do not mention. But if your most important power is your breath, all your spirituality and the 40 golden shaykh, the 40 golden chain masters said that this tariqah is built on the breath. If the whole reality of this tariqah is based on you mastering the breath, Unlocking the power of the breath and that breath coming into the lungs, nourishing the lungs, nourishing the heart, powering the blood and powering all of your organs, then your answer is, can you contaminate that breath? Everything else will be destroyed. That then you understand what is halal and haram. If your objective is to destroy your breath, destroy your lungs, destroy your heart, destroy your blood then you have become overcome by shaitan. Same thing with cannabis, anyone tell you that because of pain and sickness and difficulty you have to smoke, it's a certificate to destroy your heart, to kill your lungs, destroy your heart, destroy your blood and take away your spirituality. 
why don't you take oil? Didn't require you to burn your lungs in that process. And we said that when they brought the cold smoke, what is that? The e-cigarette? They tried to fool the children saying, this is just vaping, it's, a, it's like a fog, you take it in. No, actually that cold fume went deeper into your lungs and killed you in ways that the hot smoke couldn't do. So shaitan is a attacking insan. He wants to take out your breathing, wants to take out your lungs, wants to take out your heart so that you don't reach your finish line. If you should reach this reality of taskiyah and reach the kingdom of Allah in which Allah qalbul mu'min baytullah that your heart become the house of Allah you'll have the, the power of 1000 men whether you're man or woman. Do you think shaitan wants that? No. InshaAllah. To relieve the addiction. Yeah, the addiction is to ask to stop, make an intention to stop, recite Surat Al Fatiha seven times on the water, up to 40 times onto water, and drink that water. Making the madad, the energy, all the spiritual practices come in line that learn how to do the madad. Recite the on, on water 40 Surat Al Fatiha and then drink that jug of water, recite that Fatiha on the water and then drink from that water. And every time the water goes down for the next few days keep replenishing the water and adding upon it seven Surah Fatihas upon that. And Allah should push away that badness that entered into your body to make that addiction for smoking. Drug and alcohol addiction there are places to go for that so that you have a support group and that's a bit more complicated based on your location and who you are hanging out with and all of the different things that are around you in your life. That requires for you to go to a group and to find an AA meeting and to be a part of a community of people who want to clean themselves and sober up inshaAllah. But for cigarette smoking then to recite the Fatiha and make your madad and connection with the shaykhs inshaAllah. <coughs> Sayyidi, as someone new to loving Sufism, how to begin to build more and more love towards Prophet Muhammad by praying? Alhamdulillah praying is, is beautiful that it's required from us but the following the tariqah. Most important is to, to follow their example, read the daily awrad and like we said email for the guidance, the Sufi 101 step how to make your connection. Everything that they're giving you is to make that connection with Sayyidina Muhammad Attending the zikrs and the salawats, the live broadcast, all of that is to increase the love to Sayyidina Muhammad So that is the medicine and that is the objective is to connect humanity back to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. How many have online now? Uh, 100 and almost 150. InshaAllah we'll make intention to take the Naqshbandiya tariqah we we'll try to do on uh, Thursdays regularly inshaAllah bin niyat al Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah the online bayah that you keep your hand connected and there we're asking from Sultan al-Awliya Man Shaykh Abdul Faiz Dagestani, Sultan Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Man Shaykh Shaykh Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani and the Naqshbandi Shaykh of this time on Shaykh Muhammad Adil that to send their support and their guidance upon us and that we be under the flag of Sayyidina Mahdi salam, under the nazar of Imam Ali salam, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussain salam. Awzun in shaitan al-dheem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Inna ladheena yubayyunaka inna ma yubayyunullah, yaadullahi fawqa aydihim. Faman naqada fa inna man yaghutha la nafsi wa man awfa bima ahad alayhullah fa sayyatun ajrun azeeman. Radina billahi rabban wa bi islami deenan wa bi Sayyidina Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rasoolun wa nabiyun wa bi Qur'ani kitaban wallahumma naqulu wakeel wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa qabilna bi Sayyidina Sultanin awliya ma Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani Shaykhuna wa Murshidina wa Mawlana Shaykh Isham Kabani Shaykh Adnan Kabani 
wa Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Shaykhuna wa Murshidina. Wallahumma anna qulu wakeel, Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haq, Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haq, Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haq. Haqqun ya Rabbi ila sharaf al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa ashabi kiram wa ala mashaykina fi tariqatu nashbandiyyat al-aliyya khasatan ruhi man tariqa gawta qali kashan nashban Muhammad Waisi al-Bukhari Sultan Awliya Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghistani Sultan Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani Mawlana Shaykh Shaykh Kabani Shaykh Adnan Kabani Shaykh Muhammad Adil Mawdi Khalik al-Khujdawani Sa'al zaman Sayyid Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyifullah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Thumma Sabbaq al-Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidina Fatima al-Tiz alayhi salatu salam, Musair wa Saddatina wa Siddiqeen al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.